Murphy, do you love your dada? Good boy. <laughs> I think the biggest problem that people run into is they see the, they see the end product. They see the successful person being even more successful, or they see something that they don't think is obtainable. What I try to really explain to people is I'm a completely average person that just never knew when to quit. He got to be the hero in so many chapters of our of his career, right? They they call they're the when the cops need help, they call SWAT. So he gets to do that. This new chapter is going to be teaching other people to be their own hero. And I can't think of a better person for that. My guy's a freaking a freaking freak. So and then once again just to understand at the end of this whole thing, um, this is all goal oriented. Um, it's not just to get him looking good. He has to be able to protect and serve. So in order to do that, he has to be able to go to full sprints, drop drive, all of that stuff, and he's doing it the right way. Now he's gonna do it with one leg. So we're gonna create function where dysfunction exists. It's the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. So cool. Yo, my dog, how you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Look, I'm so freaking hyped. Um, we just got we just got to have a little conversation, like fully understand that we've progressed to this point now. You've done a remarkable job. Um, the previous prosthetic wasn't designed um, to take on a huge amount of load. And this is, we're, we're, we're progressing really, really well. Um, but I kind of want to know um, how this prosthetic is fitting with you right now. The, the component is the same, but remember before I was in a test socket. Um, so I'm now in the, in the carbon fiber socket and it's good to go with whatever. And so I think we can now start like pushing this a little bit. It fits really well right now. It feels good. Um, the, the skin breakdown and some of those things that I was having significant issues with are becoming less and less. So I'm, I'm finding that I'm, I'm being more comfortable in the leg for longer periods of time and able to do things and I'm ready to start like really start pushing to that next level with the leg and my mind and body so I'm excited. So here's, here's the thing too you've done an unbelievable job um, with the bilateral strength um, even creating a huge amount of strength in the quad of this leg mm -hmm. um, because of the fact you're able to save that knee joint. Right. It's amazing. The one thing we gotta be a little bit careful of, because I get overexcited and so do you, when we transform into the mechanics of running, we have to be somewhat intelligent about it. I just don't wanna take any steps back. Mm -hmm. So as we progress through this, not only are we gonna test this bad boy yep. to see if it's worth what it says it can do, <laughs> could we, uh, but I gotta make a thousand percent sure uh, that your mechanics are fully appropriate. Yep. Uh, so I know we got this huge test, I don't wanna pass it. I want to wax it. So what we got to do is create more horsepower in the engine, mm -hmm. which you've done an unbelievable job. But then the transfer of of that that horsepower has to be to correct mechanics. That's where we're at right now. That's the goal, long term. I do want to let you in on a little like inside baseball um, because you talked about showering, and I'm having this dilemma, I guess, because I am pushing and moving further than. I expected, and certainly than I think a lot of people expected. But I'll tell you, from a mental standpoint, I feel like, I, I, I feel incredible. But then it comes to the end of the night, right? And I take the leg off, and I'm gonna try to not get emotional when I talk about this. But the leg comes off, I inspect the leg, make sure everything's looking good, and I then shower, and I shower sitting down because it's, it's safer and I then have my walker, and there I am for the rest of the night. I go from this guy who is doing it and pushing it and will be out there truly better on one than two, to all of a sudden, like, the reality of, the reality of my life that I'm handicapped, all of a sudden just like sets in every night, you know, and I'm like, 
all right, here we go. But in the morning, I'm like, here we go. How much further can I push this? Your ability to bounce off of that is huge. Let's not get this way. You're doing this to get better so you can help people. Not even through getting, not even this action here, yeah. but so you can legitimately go save lives. So every single session from here on out matters. Not only the session, um, how we recover, um, your nutrition, your supplementation, your hydration, and your sleep. Now we're locking in big time. Pain can produce purpose in you that you had no idea. You can either wallow in your pain or you can find a purpose in it, right? Because unless you sit with bubble wrap around you and never leave your home, something bad can happen. You can either let things happen to you and, and sometimes they do happen to you. It's what you're gonna do about it. How, how are you going to not make that your defining piece of you? You know, Justin is an amputee, but that's not who he is. That's that's something that he's overcoming. The waiting was forever. From the date of the incident until January 10th, when I got the leg, it seemed like forever. Yet at the same time, this is crazy. And I've talked to people about this before that are going through these waiting periods that by being patient, working hard to do things, while you're having to patiently wait, that once you get to a certain point, you'll forget about all of that. And it is not that I haven't forgotten about how unbelievably difficult, brutal even, the last seven months have been. Put that day to be able to like, be on my feet and to walk, it was like, okay. Like, I can do this. To have my family there with me, watch me take about four steps in the parallel bars, let go of the parallel bars and be like, I'm not touching these things again and just take off was like, all right, Ed. So it's not that I forgot about the brutality of the last seven months and the eight surgeries and the trauma that my family's been through and all that kind of stuff. But all of a sudden you see this can be done. What I love about this is I can be back doing things with my family. I can make it so that Megan comes home and she's exhausted at work and I can cook and I can clean the kitchen and I can make sure the dogs are let out and I can do all of those things that I was able to do before to be that functioning family man. If we can just have, go around the table real quick and we can be eating while we're doing it and just something that you're thankful for. Just family. I mean, being able to sit here, even with not everybody here, we're yeah. missing quite a few people, but just to be able to get together for meals like this and hang out and it's perfect. Well, we'd be here all day if I listed, but I, I think um, for our jobs and family. Family and the fact that I think that you are where you are right now with your recovery. Safe. God's had his hand in all of this. The community surrounding us, like family, friends, mm -hmm. God, all, just like everybody. Like, Thankful for next, what, what's what's next to come, mm -hmm. the possibility. Thankful for the possibilities. Yeah. Thankful for like a new purpose and a purpose to hopefully help lots of people down the road. And on that, dinner's delicious. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is very good, very good. One that's scary for me is that 400 meter carry. Just because you're in a gas mask, I'm, I'm in a kit, I'm carrying 25 pounds in each hand, I have 400 meters to go and I have three minutes to do it. I know I can do it, 
but that's one of the things I'd like to start getting because I'm not I don't I'm not gonna have to run, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna, it's gonna have to be a, a, a jog under under weight and in a gas mask. We'll get, we'll get a gas mask in here. Yep. Um, and then we'll yeah, practice that. I'll, I'll bring my mask. Hell yeah. Two fifty eight. Dude is a beast. It feels like like a spring. Like you you can feel in the socket, you feel pressure. There's pain involved with every step I take, but it's a it's a very tolerable pain that is just part of the process. And every day it gets a little bit less. Um, but then when you put like high stress loads on it, there, there there's a pain, but it's not a pain indicating that something's wrong. It's just something that you're kind of pushing through. But then as you get through the residual limb into the actual socket and component, you really see what science is and what science does and how that socket actually builds that energy and you start developing that energy return and pushing through. I feel normal again. Alex, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Hell yeah. Appreciate I hope you got it. my 700 grams of protein in you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yo, my boy, unbelievable worker. Crushed it. That was specific to what you do. I'm so excited about that. Now we're trying to upgrade every... Oh, hold on one second. Karen, what's up, killer? Great. How are you? So good Great to, to see, see you. you. I'm going to introduce you to my boy here. We brought Karen along. She has a specific set of skills that's amazing. She's a catalyst. She brings groups together. She's worked in high stress situations, so she's perfect. You are so unbelievably inspirational, but I think you're gonna need a little bit of help in the public speaking realm to project to the masses. This is your lady. She's amazing. I would love to sit and chat, but I gotta go do work. Hey, Justin. Hi. So nice to finally meet you. It is super nice to meet you. And uh, I've, been, I've been very much looking forward to this. So uh, I'm so excited. Rumor has it you're thinking about possibly going into a speaking career. Yes, I, I just did my first keynote um, last weekend, nice. and how'd it that was, go? It was it was it was really good. The anticipation was brutal. Oh, I was so nervous for probably for two weeks. It's just been like this heavy weighing on me, and then within five words on stage, it was like boom. All right, cool. This is this is neat. Well, they say every time a speaker gets on stage, it's there's the speech that you plan to give, the speech you actually give, and then the speech you wish you gave. So my big problem that 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 I really wanted to talk to you about is making sure that my story, because like I, I set it up with I'm a very, very average person, totally average guy but I have a huge drive. And it's that drive that got me to the unit, you know, to my SWAT team. It's, it's the drive that's gotten me in really good shape. It's the drive that once I got hurt, it was that drive to get back. What I really want is to make sure that I'm relatable and that people in the crowd aren't looking at like, okay, well, I could never do that. Because everything that I'm doing is something that the average person could do. But it's, it's figuring out that like blend of how to make this relatable. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's really smart that you recognize that already because a lot of speakers who get up on stage don't recognize that it's not about you, it's about them. How, what are they going to leave from your talk with? Because if they just walk out going, wow, that Justin, he is a hero. He is an amazing person. I could never do that. Then what have you really accomplished besides entertaining somebody? You want to be able to, I know you are wanting to help people be their best selves, and so right, trying right, right. to take your story, as you said, yep. and make it more relatable. You know, one of the things we've, I've talked about before, like this, this incident has truly given me a third purpose in life, and that purpose is to help others be the best version of themselves. The other night I went to a talk, Sully Sullenberger was in town. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him, but no. he's the pilot that landed the plane oh, on the Hudson. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind you of a hero. You said Sully. I would have Sully. Like, yeah, it's so Sully. Yes. Yeah. So, so he has a similar challenge that you have. I mean, people look at him and go, he's a hero. How could I do something like that under that kind of stress? Right. Yet he did it and right. life went on. He talked about his story, but at the same time, he was dropping little hints to the audience the entire time I heard him talking about 
it takes, you have to have integrity throughout your life. You have to be trying to make a difference all your life or else when that crunch time comes, you're gonna fall apart or you're not gonna be able to do what's required. Right, and that's one of the things that I've tried to kind of explain to people. I, I, I didn't change when the accident happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I was already doing all of those things. This really just is a catalyst to make it so that more people have the ability to kind of hear my story. I didn't decide with the truck on top of me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my life and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get after this now. It was like, no, okay, this happened, this is unfortunate, but I'm just gonna keep doing what I was doing before. I'm gonna double down and here we go. Awesome. Well, you've survived that challenge. You can survive public speaking too, I'm sure. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. So what are you doing to prepare yourself for this next challenge? What ultimately I want is for people to know delaying some gratification by putting in work, by doing some different things, they can radically change their life. But the other thing is, is they can overcome obstacles and the best way to overcome obstacles is to be kind of prepared. Like I was never prepared for an 80,000 pound truck to rip my leg off in the middle of downtown Denver, right? But I had built up all of these different things to put me in a good place so that if I did have some type of a catastrophic, catastrophic event, which I did, that I'd be strong going into it and then knowing that I could be strong coming out of it. That's what I want to be able to explain to people. I, I want more of a holistic approach of, by doing these things in your life, you can make your life significantly better. You can start today, but let's start it and let's keep it going and get that momentum rolling. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I just don't know what the word or phrase is for that. And that may evolve. Okay. You may not be here today. Right. Uh, but certainly I know that keynote speakers just getting up and speaking the entire time has become a little passe. Uh, people love interaction and they want, again, to be able to apply this to themselves, mm -hmm. to their personal and professional lives. And I know a lot of times if you end up allowing the audience to start talking amongst themselves, one of your most humbling <laughs> adventures is going to be trying to reel them back in again. Right, right, because right. Because then they start getting involved and excited about their own talks, and, yeah. and even though they're really excited about you being there, now they're they're talking about their most important thing themselves. Right, 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 right. No, I, I love human interaction. I love being able to sit down and have a conversation with somebody. So if I'm in a group of five or 500, I still want to have that interaction. I love it. I thrive on it. I'm just really excited for you and this new adventure that you're interested in embarking on. It's a, I think you have so much to give to the audiences, but the story that you're going to be bringing to the audiences is a unique one. And it's one that nobody else can tell. And taking that and making it into a positive for your audience is amazing. And helping them understand if you can go through this, they can go through whatever they're battling in their life. I love that. I love that. Well, I'm honored to have got to sit with you. I feel um, like you've given me so much great information. Again, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. We both have big gas pedals. We both want to go. So, you know, I'll just be communicating with you how I'm feeling and you also have to do a good job with me because I want to I want to I want to take the test today. You know what I mean? I want to I want to get back today. I want to be back doing the things that I was doing and that's where you come in because you're, you're, you're my mentor on this side of it. You're, you're my coach, and my mentor, my friend, and I want to go on your expertise as to like, 
when I'm actually ready to go and when that horsepower and the mechanics are working together so that action can go out and account and accomplish those goals that I'm so geeked out for. The authenticity that you attack everything with freaking geeks me uh, beyond concept. The, the thing that you've done, and I know we had a conversation, actually yesterday we had the conversation, where you're like, I wanna get this old, I wanna test out um, in eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, do I think you could? Here's the one thing about you, absolutely. Uh, but I wanna test out appropriately. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is, I cannot even imagine the compensation patterns created by having one leg. So I'm freaking thinking, you go to shower, balance on one leg. You got to, it's like, you have so many compensation patterns, and if we don't raise the threshold of the entire system appropriately, there's gonna be breakdown. Yep. So yep. I'm gonna avoid breakdown as best I can, but we gotta, I mean, it's crazy. Like sometimes you've done such a great job, I forget you're on a prosthetic. And then I'm like, transfer the feet, and you're like, I don't have a foot. Right. Well, I'm like, like let's MAT it, I don't have, you know, it's like hard for me to see. When we're done with this entire process, I want it impossible for someone who's looking at you move mm -hmm. to be able to tell that you have a prosthetic. Right. Because that means if we do it correctly, there'll be less overall compensation. It, it's absolutely damn inspirational, my guy. Thank you, Hell thank yeah. you, love it. Last week I got cleared to go back and start training. Um, so doing some of the administrative stuff, getting back into the, the, the mental mindset of going through briefings, going through plannings, all of that kind of stuff. And then it's the physical part of being able to go move with the team, getting back to the range. PBS 12 believes in the power of original, local programming. Help us bring more shows, like the one you just watched, by donating at pbs12.org slash program support today.